Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is Bethel Temple going live right now. We're going into our fourth word for our seven word, um, uh, our seven word, seven phrases that Jesus said on the cross. I'll give it a few minutes. I know, uh, if anything, uh, like I said before, we didn't really have a, a time set of where we were going to put this. So thank, you know. So here we are now. I know it's maybe late, but I know most people at this time or hour are just scrolling through their phone, going through their things right before they go to bed. Amen. So right now would probably be a perfect time to kind of do this. But, you know, I thank God that uh, you're kind of joining us right now. We're just getting started. This is going to be the fourth word. Amen. Jesus Christ, our first, uh, fourth phrase that Jesus Christ was saying on the word. Amen. So with that, if you want to write it down or remember yourself or, or if you're watching now, uh, we're going to go over Jesus Christ in chapter 15, Mark chapter 15 in verse 34. Now, I know everybody or if not everyone should know this scripture already. Uh, if you're saved and if you've known this uh, this part of Christ and what he's done. Uh, it's this part where on the ninth hour, Jesus cried out a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, and you have to realize, you know, and if you continue to read on, when God said this, when Christ said this on the cross, the, the soldiers and the, and the people that were there crucifying him began to mock him because he was crying out to God and, you know, as we know, they were expecting the angels to come down, God to rain down uh, fire, God to save them and pull them out because he was the Messiah. But nothing like that drastically happened. So they kind of mocked him for this. But then it brings you into that realization of what was Christ uh, doing in this part. Uh, you know, there's a lot of trans, uh, translations that people have brought forth, but I know for a guarantee of what most people bring, especially in this word, is the fact that Christ bore all our sins. Amen. And if we know anything about God is that we serve a holy and righteous God that cannot dwell together with sin. It's it, it, the God is that we serve is so holy and so pure that ho that sin cannot indent within our holy God. So when Christ bore all those sins, Amen. The Christ, Father, the Father had to depart or leave him in a way. And you have to remember that when you go deeper into your Word and you begin to realize where Jesus Christ went when he bore all those sins. Where does every sinful person end up? Amen. At the gates of hell. And we, re we, we realize that Christ was going towards that, that area because of what he bore. And he came and rose on the third day and conquered death. Amen. And, and took the keys of Hades and, and now lives free and reign in this father's place. But, you know, I want to I wanna, uh, put a little bit more emphasis on. On, you know, for us as Christians, um, this is a great example for us as we live in this life, especially when this virus came and this COVID came. How many people have mocked us? Or well, I know I've been mocked. I know others have been mocked. Or how many times have someone mocked you and saying, where is your God? Why is all these terrible things happening? Why is this virus still happening? People are healing, are praying for healing you know, I, a pastor that passed away dearly that we were praying for, we went to the hospital, we prayed for him, we did everything we could, we, we fasted, mighty men of God, everyone gathered together, and yet still he had passed away. And in that kind of sense, you, you come to the realization and you come to that question was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, and those kind of things rise up in us in the flesh. But at the end of the day, Christ had a greater purpose for this. And this is where we realize that no matter what you go through, whether it's a struggle, whether it's a blessing, or whether things are going great or bad, you do, we, not you, but we will never, ever wrap our mind around God. 
His thoughts are not our thoughts. And we may be going through struggles or times where it might look like, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But we don't know the true meaning and purpose of what God's going to be doing in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that suffering, in the midst of what he's trying to bring forth in our lives. It could be for ourselves. It could be for those around us. It could be for something that's we can ne we never even thought about. I know as I've I've walked with Christ, there's been done there's been things done in my life that I've questioned tremendously, and yet the blessing was on the other side. And um, you know this is where even Jesus Christ Himself had said, "I don't know the hour or the time on when I will return." That is only the Father. So even Christ himself was limited on the capacity of knowing or having the mind of God. And we have to remind ourselves in that time of struggle or in that time of seasons, especially right now, be careful. Please be careful. You know, there's a lot of prophets out there and there's a lot of prophecies and this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And it's the end times. And yeah, and I, I agree with it. It's the end times that we're getting there. But be careful on who you listen to. Be careful on what's being brought out because no man knows the hour. Not even the Son of God knows the hour. Only God the Father. And, um, you know, and I want to really press that into where this word to me, uh, for in my heart during my times of prayer of bringing this out, this word out was that focus right now, especially, um, you know, because we have to remind ourselves of how human we are at times. And knowing that even though Jesus Christ said these, these words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he was being uh, mocked and, and ridiculed for that. You know, he still cried out. He still said it. He still allowed his 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 body, his flesh, his uh, spirit to cry out to God. And whether it's a cry out of of shame, whether it's a cry out of wonder, whether it's a cry of questioning, or whatever it is, you have to be willing to cry out to your God. That's what God says when He says that when He judges the world or when He judges a person, He judges them on their heart. And God wants our heart to be completely open with Him in any way, shape, or form, knowing that your heart is truly given unto God during these times or whatever that's running into your life that you may be questioning. We can't be fearful to come to God. That's why the Bible says to come boldly to the throne of God and be able to express ourselves, express that time unto Him, amen, to whatever season or time that we're going through. But the main thing that uh, to get across this is where, you know, uh, we've been mocked as Christians. We've been mocked during this pandemic. We've been mocked on, on things that happen. But realize, always remember that God is the one in control of all circumstances. And the purpose that must be fu fulfilled is greater than the pain and suffering we may face. Christ... Due to his last words, because <coughs> I'm not going to go into the last words because that's that's for another sermon. But, uh, you know, we, we realize that, uh, you know, he had a struggle. He had a hard time to go through this time of, of pain and suffering. And this is why I, I truly encourage you, brothers and sisters, don't treat this week as any other week. Like, really enjoy the time and remembrance of God. And I thank God that, you know, Brother John and I have, um, you know, well, John <coughs> got encouraged to, to start doing this because, you know, when God is... When God is in reverence and he's and he's done what he's done in the past, it's good to give remembrance and give honor to what God has done. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, and God is just uh, tremendously has done so much for us. And we think that, oh, if I go to church on Sunday, it's enough. It's not enough. No matter what we do, no matter how much we thank him, no matter how the, all the actions, the, the good deeds all those things, it's never going to be enough. It's the heart that we give unto God. Even if it's a broken heart, even if it's a shattered heart, even if it's something that's deep down inside that we don't want to share with anybody else. <coughs> but God is seeking for our hearts, amen. And He's willing to mend those broken hearts. He's willing to, for, uh, you know, bring to life that darkness that's inside of us and heal us from any iniquity and pain and suffering. 
I don't know about you, but for Christ, for God to send his only son <clears throat> to be crucified, beaten and mocked, it's not like if God was just shy away and didn't know what was happening. He knew exactly what was taking place. And for the Father in heaven to hear those words for his son, you know what I mean? God, it's like being a parent and, and having a child. And if a child were to tell uh, you, your son, your, if your son or daughter were to tell you, like, you, you failed me, father. You, you, you failed me, mother. You, you, you abandoned me in my weakest time and my moment. You know, God, because of his heart so pure and so loving, that agape love, our God feels and knows the pain that we suffer. Amen. But our God also knows the plans He has for our lives. And Christ had to bear that cross for us. For us. Amen. And that's something to be more than grateful because it's not about whether uh, you're willing to die for your children. Because most people will be right away to say, I'll die for my son. I'll die for my daughter. But will you be willing to die for the crack addict? Will you be willing to die for the drug addict that has no part or meaning in your life. Would you will, willing to leave? I've And I've been dealing with this question as I've been going through this word. <coughs> and me, Joseph, would I be willing to lay down my life if something were to happen outside this world and I see someone that's getting beaten or if something terrible is taking place, would I be willing to sacrifice my life for that person and leave my kids without a father? You know, and the word that I spoke of yesterday when 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 uh, Christ had passed and, she, you know, left her mother, left his mother, you know, and these are these are things where we have to give honor to where honor is due. And that's Christ, Christ in Christ alone. And we we recognize that the plans that God has for us, we will never grasp the full understanding. This is why the, even Christ or this is the reason why. Christ himself has said, do not plan for tomorrow, for you do not know what is, to, what to, what, what is planned for tomorrow. God only knows what's ahead. You may, you may get a prophetic word. You may get a plan or a calling on your life. I know I've been called and, uh, you know, that's great and everything, but I can't plan ahead. I have to take it day by day in order for him to mold me, shape me and prepare me into the man that he's called me to be. And that goes for all of us of where we can see, we could see the signs of the end times and we could predict and all these things of what's taking place and what's coming in our lives. But in the end of the day, we have to trust our God through the pain, through the agony. And yes, sometimes it may feel, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have I not been faithful? Have I not been good? You know? Where we have to, you know, we remind ourselves that God knows exactly what He is doing. And He's paying attention to our lives. He's paying attention to every detail. He knows exactly what you're going through, what you're feeling. But remember, amen, it's only for a moment's pain. Amen. <clears throat> you stay faithful to the end and God will give you the victory at the end of the day. God will bless you. God will continue to help you along the way he'll strengthen you through that time amen christ wasn't alone on that cross until he bore all those sins and and he had to say the last part amen but i'm gonna save that for later um but that's that's all i have let me see my time here because i didn't want to go too far 13 minutes okay that's great <coughs> sorry if you uh just joined on uh right now uh but uh this word will be posted up we're going to save it. Amen. I thank God that uh, for those that joined and I had an opportunity to hear the word live. But I want to personally invite you to our Sunday service, uh, Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. Brother John's going to be bringing the word. Uh, Easter Sunday, we're going to be having communion. Amen. Uh, uh, so, and then that's following Sunday, uh, Sunday night at 5 p.m. I will be bringing forth the word, another double dose. God's on the move. Like I said from before, give God honor where honor is due and just 
one ser one service isn't enough for God. You know, you, you want to live for God. You want to express your love for Him. And that just, just by showing up to services and being at church and fellowshipping with your brothers and sisters says a lot. Amen. But I'm a, that's that's about it for this word. I hope it encouraged you. I hope it continues to press into our lives as brothers and sisters of Christ. And God bless you. Amen.